Hey everyone, welcome. So this video, we're gonna be talking about creating an indefinite loop, or you might hear it as sentinel loop if you're in university or whatever. It's a little bit more of a fancier name to mean the same thing. But pretty much, we're going to create a loop that is an infinite loop, but we can create some way to break out of the loop if we want. So that's the magic of an indefinite loop. We do not know how long it's gonna go on. It'll just go on indefinitely. All right, so where do we even start? Well, there's a lot of different ways you could construct something like this. My best way to think through this is to come up with an example of maybe a menu or something where you ask the person if you want to continue. You know, maybe you're reading some data from the keyboard and you want to keep doing that indefinitely. So let's just go through an example where we ask the user if they want to continue and they can hit yes or no. So what we do is we print a question. Do you want to continue? And then we get the response through input. So we'll say response and say input. And now this is really interesting because something so simple can cause someone a lot of headache. Because if you're getting input and you're trying to ask them if, you, if they wanna continue, you might think, oh, I'm gonna assign this to a variable called input. And the problem with this is that, well, we can't use input because that's the name of a function here. So that's not gonna work. So you might shorten that. Oh, I'll just use in. That'll work, right? Well, no, because in is a keyword to check if a value is in something. So you're like, oh, you know what? The ultimate solution here, I'm gonna use the word continue to see if they want to keep going. And nope, that's not the keyword you wanna use either because continue is used to continue the next iteration of a loop. Whoops. So we have three different names that you might think to name this variable, but you can't. So what we need to do is we need to do something else, such as response. Fortunately, we have some syntax highlighting, so if it's white, we know it's good. And now what you can do is you can do a while loop to see if the response is yes. And actually, a common convention is y or n. So y being yes, n being no. So while response is equal to the value yes, then what we're going to do is continue the process. So we can ask them again if they want to continue, and then we can get their response. So, hmm, this looks oddly familiar to exactly what we did in the previous video. So this is essentially a do while loop, even though there's no do keyword inside of Python, where we're doing something at least once, and then we do it again within the loop if the condition allows for us to do it again. So this was one of the two ways I taught you guys how to structure a loop like this, where we have a little bit of redundancy with our code, we have it in here twice. For such a small loop, it's not a huge issue, but if you have a larger loop, then you probably just wanna say while true and then have some condition to break. And maybe we'll get into showing you that in this video. But for now, let's run this and give it a try. We hit run. Do you want to continue? You type Y, hit enter, and it keeps going. So this is how you create an indefinite loop. Then if you don't wanna go anymore, you could put N, or actually you could just put literally anything else because it's just checking to see if it's Y. So we could actually do Q, whatever it might be. Another common example of this is you might have a loop and then you can use Q to quit. So a setup like that might look like this here. This is just a different example. I'll separate this out so we can reference the old code and then we can replace it in a second. So we'll say while true, and then we could do something like print Q to quit, continuing, <laughs> how do you even spell that, man? <gasps> continuing, all right, spelling is not my strong suit. Don't worry about it, guys. Continuing, dot, dot, dot. And then we can get some user input here, so we'll say response is input, and then if response is equal to Q, actually, we'll just do uppercase Q, then what are we gonna do? We're going to break. So that's another structure you could do for this. So let's get rid of the old one, run this, and it's going to just continue anytime we type anything. And then when we're ready to quit, we can hit Q, make sure it's upward case, hit enter, and it stops. So that is another example of an indefinite loop, and you'll probably see variations of this throughout your programming career. Next up, I wanna talk a little bit about casing and characters, so stay tuned for the next one.